T'was early in the spring when I set out to go to work up in the woods in North Ontario. I just saw something terrible, but god damn is this beautiful. Like, It's so uncomfortable. It's so unsettling because this dude's spine has just been like dislodged. Like I think slash like yeah, slasher fans are gonna love it. Is the general audience going to? I don't know. People whispering, and then all of a sudden it's just this explosion of gore in your face. It was a scene I wanted to tap out in. You know, um, it was like, okay, can we just get through this because I've had enough. So as a big Friday fan, this movie means the world to me. Animals don't get too hung up on reason. They just keep killing. Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. And yes, the time is here. We are here to discuss, of course, the horror movie of the summer. Uh, potentially, potentially. We got a couple other contenders. But uh, we are talking all spoilers for In a Violent Nature. And yes, we have with us on this one, we're starting off uh, with the gentleman right below me there, of course. Uh, introduce yourself, sir. I am Killjoy Jake. And, uh, of course, you guys know Luke over there. We've got him. Uh, he, he had decided to show up for this one. And uh, then we have the man above him. Uh, sir, introduce yourself to everybody as well. Hello, I'm Evan from Rockland Graves Productions. Perfect, perfect. So this, man, this was a fun movie. I, I was so into this the second this trailer dropped. I know a few of us, uh, we talked about it on lives. I know Jake's been covering it extensively. Uh, anytime there's a little piece. And thank you to the good folks over at IFC and Shutter providing all of us with screeners so we could get this done. Uh, just for your information, we're recording this about a week before it hits, uh, but you guys are not seeing it until, of course, the Sunday after. So hopefully you're watching this, you haven't seen the film, because we're going to spoil everything. We're gonna rip into this one. We're gonna let you know all I'm about it. And movie. unlike the last time we all got together for The Strangers Chapter One, <laughs> this one's gonna be pretty positive. I, I think there's only a handful of complaints, but for the most part, I think we are, are a very positive. Uh, Forgot group about that on movie. this one. Yeah, <laughs> right. Good. Um, but uh, the one other piece to this that I, I had a the pleasure of getting to sit down with uh, Ray Barrett. So you're going to be seeing a couple of uh, snippets from that interview interspliced throughout our conversation, uh, just whenever there's some relevant points of what we're talking about. Uh, and I'll kind of put that in there. But he's a really awesome guy. So I thank him and, again, Shudder and IFC for setting up that conversation. So we'll start from the bottom here. Jake, We, I, I, you're the only person I have not heard your full thoughts and opinions. We texted a little bit, but... I need to hear your raw thoughts, opinions, feelings, everything about In a Violent Nature, go. Well, well hang on. Apologies for my ignorance, but who is Ray Barrett? I'm so, I, I need oh, to know more about this real quick. This is the gentleman who uh, played Johnny. So he's the slasher. So yeah, we I, they set it up with him. Uh, that's so right. cool. <laughs> yeah, we, that's how Damn. we got our, our screener like stupid. I was early. geeking when Dylan told me that was happening. Like, that's cool as fuck. Yeah, I, we were, I'm just I, learning about this. This yeah. is so cool. He's a super cool guy. Uh, he was really uh, had a lot of fun with this role. I mean, I'll, I'll show just a, a quick clip here real, real fast. It's got to be pretty surreal to be kind of stepping into the shoes of what I think is going to be uh, something horror fans are going to be hoping for more installments of. And uh, hopefully we get to see more of Johnny later on down the road. So how was it when you got the script? Was this something you were like, I absolutely need to do this? Or was this something that you kind of had to be sold on? Uh, well, thanks, man. But and yeah, I am I am a big uh, uh, slasher uh, fan geek. Uh, so I, it was it was I mean, that was a big part of it right off the bat. But but knowing the people who, who were involved in this film right off the bat to 
and uh, knowing what what Chris can do with special effects and with the camera and and how to uh, well and the just the perspective the the different viewpoint for this to do something different that is also an homage to all these films that I love uh, and yeah when I got sent the script I was pretty much I mean I was already on board anyway uh, but mm -hmm. when I read some certain kill scenes I I was getting really excited and just crossing my fingers that they were actually going to be what was in the script because. That doesn't always happen, but it mm. did here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he's just honestly a, a gentleman of a person. Uh, he had a, a lot of fun with this. He's really good friends with the director and the producer. So when they came to him with this, they were just like, you know, uh, you kind of fit the build. We know you know what you're doing. Like, we want to just throw you in a bunch of makeup and throw you out in the forest. And he, he embraced it. He's a huge Slasher <laughs> fan. So the fact that he got to walk around and kind of embody his own version of Jason Voorhees uh, was just a dream come true to him. Well, he did an excellent job. I loved this film to death. It is my favorite movie of 2024 thus far, like in general. Like I've seen a lot, I've seen a couple of things here and there. This is the thing that just did it for me. I am a huge Friday the 13th fan and I've been wanting a new movie ever since 2009. And this is kind of that in a, in a lot of ways. It's definitely its own thing, but it's you can't deny the the uh the parallels the things that are so similar to Friday the 13th throughout this entire movie. And it's, in a way, I almost feel like it's a better formula than Friday the 13th. Like, you're focusing on the most interesting character the whole time, and you're just getting the important parts of the boring characters, who are just the meat bags that are going to get slaughtered. Which might be a hot take. Might be a very, very, very hot take. But I loved everything this movie did. There is... You know, and there's a couple of uh, things with it, right? There's a couple of stigmas with it in the universe right now from people who have just seen the trailer. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, that looks like it's going to be super slow. We're just going to be watching a guy walking the entire time. Surprisingly, there is one scene of this movie I found to be slow, and it's towards the end, and it doesn't feature the character at all, which I'm sure we'll get to a little a little later. But oh, yeah. I found yeah. this movie to be super fast paced. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. That maybe that's another hot take. I was engaged throughout this entire thing until like the last 10 minutes. And even then it wasn't like horrible. It didn't ruin the movie for me or anything. It was just kind of a weird way to end this film. That's all. It just kind of ends with a bit of a whimper when I think it could have ended with a big bang. Uh, but I, I really did it. I dude, I enjoyed everything about this movie. Of course, I think the highlight is Johnny and the insane fucking kills we get in this movie that had me losing my mind. I was just telling you guys before we started recording. I had to go back for one scene like twice. I'm like, I got it. I got to see that again. I that was the most. Did. Oh, yeah. yeah, dude. That would make Art the Clown weep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was amazing. I don't know. Or at it's least my... not his head. He'd be like, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, he'd be very proud. Yeah. Very proud. Him uh, and Johnny would be friends. I loved oh, it. Just 10 out of 10. Absolutely. Luke, uh, obviously, uh, maybe some of our viewers here, maybe they are just finding the channel, but give us your thoughts and opinions on In a Violent Nature. Our review is up on the channel, and as you guys are watching this, all of our reviews should be live, so check them out. Yeah, uh, you know, our review, uh, we just gushed about it uh, for the most <laughs> part, so I'm in the same boat with everyone else. You know, uh, looking at it, uh, we talked about a little bit of when you hear that this is from the point of view of a killer, it's like, what does that look like? You know, it's a... It's a um, method that has never been applied before probably because a lot of people have looked at it and on paper it would not work just because hey it is our killer walking from one spot to the next but when you look at this and yes there are spots of our killer walking they make the scenery the the um sound design it's also interesting so even though if you're just watching him walk there's more to it than that you can kind of just take in everything that they've done and i think yes on paper this may not work but when you see it visually it absolutely works it's a lot of fun now is every slasher going to be like this no i don't think it should be but you know i think this was such an interesting experiment to do because you can see how you take something like like jake said this shares a dna very closely with something like friday the 13th but again that's kind of your comfort blanket where it's you can't take something a totally different that we haven't ever seen before and applied this method to it because you kind of need that that idea that formula that we've seen prior and then apply something new to it and i think that's why this works so well is that we have our kind of pseudo jason Voorhees, where it's it's very similar but it's also different and i think it makes it work even more because we are familiar with it you know that camp setting which i think absolutely perfect setting for this uh something 
on the lower budget side of things where, hey, you can use that natural lighting and make it look beautiful. Um, you know, so for me, this works in so many different levels with the kills, with the sound design, with the scenery. It just all works. And of course, hey, we got a new great killer out of this thing, too. Oh, yeah. Can't can't agree more with you there. Evan, give us your raw thoughts. How are you feeling about In a Violent Nature? So I was quite drawn to this thing immediately. Like, I remember you you sent me the teaser when it first came out, and I hadn't heard of the movie. And immediately, as soon as I saw the descriptor, like, ambient slasher, I was like, I'm so in on that. Like, that, that sort of, like, dense atmospheric approach is something that really resonates with me. And then to combine that with, like, something like Friday the 13th, which I think we're all huge fans of, like, it, it's a formative thing for a lot of people in horror... Uh, we all have lots of great memories with it. So to me, like combining a really atmospheric focus in with some of the like camp and over the top brutality of Friday the 13th was such a compelling idea. And then to find out that it's like a Canadian slasher, <laughs> let's go. Canadian slashers fucking rock. We got Black Christmas and My Bloody Valentine or some of the some of the big ones. But uh, so I, w I was really excited about this and I was thoroughly pleased with it. I think we're all in a very similar boat with this one where it was just such a thrill ride, especially us being fans of Friday the 13th, to see someone approach that sort of material through such a unique lens and one that, as Luke was saying, doesn't sound great on paper and in the wrong hands, it definitely could have been a slog. And Jake, I was thinking about what you were saying. I don't think I found the movie fast-paced. I didn't find it was dragging, but what I did find was that it was just like, kind of mesmerizing like you look at the trailer and there's like the sound of a ticking metronome through it and a lot of this movie it just immerses you in the soundscape and the world because it's letting you linger in johnny just wandering through the woods so much that you end up just kind of like almost relaxed like it's 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 an oddly relaxing experience and one where i was just like so zeroed in on it like it, it had my attention the whole way through even though it is a slow paced movie like in terms of scene structure, it didn't feel slow. I wasn't bored. It was very engaging. And then we also have some some fantastic kills. One all-timer kill that is easily one of the best kills I've ever seen in a slasher movie, and I'm, we're, we're gonna gush about it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's fucking awesome. I, I think it's one that any slasher fan, whether or not you walk away from the movie feeling pleased with it as a whole, you have to go see it just because there is some shit in here that is going to go down in the Hall of Fame, and you want to see that on the big screen. Uh, I've seen it twice now. I'll probably have seen it a third time by the time this video drops because I want to see it in the theater mm -hmm. among other people reacting to some of these moments for the first time. I fucking loved it. This was great. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to go see it in theaters as well, and I, I would just be uh, restating everything you guys have stated. I, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, you know, I think that it's got a lot of uh, bright spots. And one of those big bright spots for me uh, is the character of Johnny. And uh, I think that one of the things that I took away that uh, I wanted to kind of expand upon for my review was just the kind of emotional core that you get with that character a little bit. Like you do spend a good deal of downtime with Johnny at points, like the scene where he is sitting there uh, looking at the little car. And knowing his backstory and how they tricked him and how this all this stuff happened. Uh, so I want to kind of go back around here. How did you guys feel about just the the lore of Johnny here and, and just kind of the the character as a, as a whole, Jake? I think it was really important to differentiate himself from Jason Voorhees because I mean, in terms of look, in terms of I mean, even where he's at, how he's killing people, it's very very similar, very comparable. And even then, his backstory is a little like kind of the same, you know, in in a sense. But it's not ex it's not exact. It's not the exact same thing. You can spot differences um, if it's from you know the character's dialogue who are talking about it. It's if it's when you get clarification a little later from a different character. I I kind of love it. It it keeps you intrigued even during times when people aren't being viciously murdered, which is a big thing about slashers. If you can keep my attention even past the kills, that means you got something special. You got some lightning in the bottle here. And I, I think this movie does that really well. Um, I love that we get moments like you were talking about with the, the toy car, where it's like we get to see this character who is almost like Peter Pan syndrome stuck in like that, like uh, 
that child in an adult body who's it's like just killing people because that's what it like an animal like is thinking to do and we we get something towards the end which i keep i keep just bouncing around i we're, i know we're gonna get to it so that's why i'm like i don't want to expand upon it yet i feel like it's really important to the story but like the way that they present it at the end which is all about johnny like that's what this conversation ends mm. up being about um well, i can't remember what it was called if it was, was it like hen syndrome like hen fever syndrome. hen house syndrome thank you so much um yeah, I, I think that is that, that perfectly hits on who this character is even better, like beyond the specifics of his backstory. But it's something that I feel like this 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 ending just drags out to death and you're just like, okay, man, <laughs> like we, we got it. Thank you. Cool. Let's move on. I, I was intrigued by it. I loved it. I think Johnny's an excellent character. I would go so far as to say that he could lead his own franchise maybe at some point in the future. Yeah, and you know, Luke even expanded upon that a little bit with a, a question he posed to me. But Luke, your thoughts on Johnny, the slasher, the character? You know, I, I thought the backstory was really smart and kind of, um, you know, looking at prior slashers, this one had, um, I don't know, maybe a little more connective tissues. I'm not sure if that's the word I'm looking for. But, you know, when you look at this, where we set the table at the very beginning of just the mayhem that has ensued, or the lore behind Johnny. Um, and then he comes up from the ground and then, you know, we see him, you know, do his thing for a little bit. And then mm -hmm. of course we get the campfire scene where we kind of lay out all that groundwork of exactly what happened. You know, I, I love the kind of, um, different gears we go through with Johnny here where we understand that, you know, he was an innocent at the time of his death, you know, um, it, through no fault of his own, someone, you know, hurt themselves on his toy and then, you know, it ended up in his death. Um, and then as we kind of get through his motivation of this whole locket, and even when he goes into that, that first kills um, a little house mm -hmm. and he, he walks in and he sees that locket and we kind of get that, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of seeing in the mirror and that kind of flashback, but I like that kind of connective tissue that we get that motivation of, hey, he wants his locket. He's attached to his mother. And, you know, you look at um, Jason Voorhees and everyone makes fun of, you know, him being a mama's boy in a sense. But we never really get that kind of that deep motivation for him where, you know, you can kind of understand that he has a love for his mother and, um, you know, with uh, the sweater and, you know, keeping the head and all this stuff. But um, this one really has that kind of grounded lore to it where, hey, he has this locket and it really does play and even to, to the end, you know, at his motivation of getting the locket back and then just a, going about his business, you know, that's what he wants. So you kind of get all these different gears with Johnny where he's just not this mindless killer. We understand that motivation. He wasn't innocent at the time of his death. And, you know, he he's not. Un, if he's undisturbed and his locket stays where it's at, hey, he's not going to do shit. But once you once you take that, hey, everything's on the table, you know. And of course, I love the the dynamic he has with the ranger because yes, he he's acting on instinct. And once he gets his locket back, he will go back into the ground or do his own thing. Um, but when we see that he has a score to settle with the ranger, I love that we kind of have this all these different gears that he goes through. It's not just this one mindless killer. It's just this kind of, hey, we're going through about, and he does have these feelings. He is a child, but he also holds grudges. He does want his locket. He loves his mother. So, you know, I think we do have this deep-rooted connective tissue with Johnny, and I absolutely love that when uh, we're looking at, you know, 2024, it's hard to establish a, a slasher, a unique slasher that does have this backstory and i think they did it here so for me i am a big fan of johnny and i, I would love to see this continue if you know they did have a site sequel to this awesome yes i totally agree i think a, a sequel would be nice uh definitely we spoke about it just a tad where we said that we were kind of hoping that they wouldn't do the same gimmick with this where they they're following him but maybe take the character of johnny put him maybe find a different angle or give us more of like a, a, a traditional look. Cause I think like the character himself is strong enough, but Evan, mm -hmm. how do you feeling about Johnny as a character and just kind of the, the backstory and the heart they kind of give to him? I think one of the things that I really appreciated about this, and I, I wasn't sure how they were going to uh, approach uh, his character when the movie was coming out. Cause it was being marketed as this sort of almost elevated slasher. So I was like, are they going to try to like make a really complicated villain here that's like a metaphor for something? And no, that's not what we have. What we have here is a very simple but really effective and fleshed out slasher without diving into like 
super complex backstory or or wildly intricate motivations or a ton of mystery. There isn't much mystery around him. We know most of what we need to know about him. Um, I I really fucked with someone took his mom's locket and he wants it back, <laughs> and that's it. I, I I really enjoyed that, but it's not as simple as him just like brute forcing his way through the movie to get his locket. You do see this spectrum of how he will approach different victims depending on his history with them. Like I'm not getting into it yet, but the yoga thing is very much like just him being creative and wild and seeing what he can pull off. And then the park ranger, there's very much like there's a score that he's trying to settle here in it. Mm -hmm. And you get this really great spectrum of like creative fun kills with him and then dark and genuinely disturbing kills that like when you're watching it, you're like, ugh, it's it doesn't feel as fun as some of the other ones. But that's a it was really great. And then you also have the moments of him like playing with a little dinky where I was like, this is fucking fantastic. Like I, I was enjoying the movie and then that scene honestly was I was one of the moments where I was like, all right, I genuinely love this now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of great stuff like that in that. Yeah, they add such a good like playful side to him, but don't make him goofy, and they don't push things so far that it just feels like overly complicated or messy. Like Luke was saying, I didn't need to see like the reflection thing in the mirror early on. However, it was a very brief and effective way to establish something that is difficult to establish without feeling contrived. So like. I was okay with like five seconds of being like, I, you know, some some weird shit going on. But the movie never does anything like that again. So it, it's a uh, it's it's a sacrifice that I can not not a sacrifice, but it's something that I can definitely live with in the context of how the rest of the movie plays out. But I thought he was great. I thought he was fun. He was intimidating. Um, the performance was fantastic. The visual design of him is great. Um, I love the sort of like fireman tool set that he's working with throughout the movie and i loved how much fun you could tell he was having with murdering people horribly i mean i kind of i kind of viewed johnny a little bit like like a wild animal um and maybe one that has a little bit of something wrong that that is uh jaded them in a way that can't be fixed um but it, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, I never really looked at him as the villain. I like, I know how a slasher film works, and and how you're, as an actor, you're not supposed to ever judge your character and stuff. But I, you know, he's a he's a he's a killing machine. That's that's what he is by yeah. nature. But it's I never looked at him as a bad guy because of it. Because he, I mean, and I and I guess he is. But I, I mean, he, he he's awoken um, by a certain thing, and he just wants that thing back and kind of everything in between doesn't matter to him. It's just a matter of this one thing that he wants so he can go back to sleep and, and rest in peace, I guess. Um, and so to me, yeah, it, for me, it was, he's, he's an animal, so he can't, and he can't really judge an animal that way. Um, I guess that was mm -hmm. how I could. Uh, <clears throat> no, I love that. Yeah, no, definitely. Like I said, it adds an, another layer of just like, personality to him and I, I think that really shines through uh, in the film yeah no I think that they uh, really get the right balance of personality when it comes to uh, you know the silent slasher because like there's it, they've developed it over the years with like Michael and Jason you know especially those two uh, being the more silent slashers and I mean the benefit with like the in the modern era with like Art the Clown is that he's a mime so it's like he is all expression really at the end of the day, but it's, it's none of it is through uh voice. And I think that uh, Johnny does a really good job of doing it very subtly. So I think uh, we've buried the lead long enough. There is one kill in here that is absolutely over the top and completely absurd. But before we dive into that and talk about that for a few minutes, I want a very brief, just give me other than that, other than the yoga kill, uh, round table starting with Jake uh, what what is the uh, other kill in this film that you would say is probably uh, your favorite oh man um you know what honestly is it is it oh is his name Troy <laughs> I can't remember like how does he die I don't know the, the dickhead <laughs> yeah. who gets like um he gets crazy Ralphed from part two 
Yeah, it's the yeah. same kill. I, you know what? I'm not gonna lie. That's why I like it because I'm like, oh, crazy Ralph kill, cool. You know, more more homage. I again, I was going into this movie like expecting a love letter to Friday the Thirteenth, and it's not. It's really not that. It just has some moments that kind of just like, oh, okay, here we go. Like we're just kind of we're, we're we're paying respects, but we're doing our own thing. And this is definitely a moment of that. But it was it was an impressive kill that's pretty much right off the bat that you get in the first like 10, 15 minutes or so that I, I really liked. And honestly, I think they did it better than Friday the Thirteenth. Hot take. Uh, it's it's go it's gorgeous, gorgeously <laughs> disgusting. I loved it. And it was it's really shocking the way they do it. Mm -hmm. Like he just gets the the fucking thing right through his mouth and it's fast and ugh, just yeah. Whole and you're not sure what off. to expect by that point. So like them kicking it off like that, you're like okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Usually in slashers, you know, you get an opening kill, then exposition for like yeah. 15 minutes or so. No, like this just, this moves, yeah. man. This moves. And that's another thing I liked about it. I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm... I'm going you're on this rant here, but dude, like we skip all the bullshit with the, the nonsensical characters. Like that is such a big positive in this movie's corner. And this is a prime example of it. This is a character who like Shelly in part three of Friday would, they'd spend too much time. <laughs> you're just like hanging out with this annoying fucking character and you're like, kill him already, you know? And then finally it happens. But um, would you in be this yourself if you had a <laughs> face like this, <laughs> all right. I just like, we Turner get to the punchline a little bit. Like, come on now. Hey, I, I mean, love him. Been, Don't get me he's, wrong. He's, he's doing great. No, I, I love Shelly, but I totally get it. Uh, Luke, I know what your answer is, but uh, I want you to explain it to everybody because uh, this was one we had a point of contention on for a very brief moment. Yes, this is true. Um, you know, I love uh, the kill that we're tabling. Um, you know, it's such a spectacle kill, but for me, I think my favorite kill in the in entire uh, film is the park ranger. Um, it's just... it. It's so cerebral. Um, I the night shots in this are sometimes they're hard to pull off, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And I, anytime we're at that little uh, park ranger station, I think it's it, with the the motion light. I think it's just absolutely perfect. Um, so it really has it sets the tone. And then you know when we get into that and we establish that hey he's been up out of the ground before and we have a personal issue here. Um, you know, I didn't think that much of it. I didn't know we were really going to go the route we're going to go in. Um, and then, you know, they're wrestling and then he, he like snaps his spine. I'm like, is that it? Are we done here? And then uh, he walks off and then you hear just something fucking start. And I don't know <laughs> what it is, but I'm really intrigued. And then he just comes and he grabs him and he drags him in there. And, uh, I think, well, does he put the hook through his face? Um, uh, no, it's through his shoulder. Through his shoulder. Okay. Um, and as he drags him in there and then we, he shows him what's going to be happening to him and this dude cannot move. And I just love that, you know, he's almost expressionless in his face because he can't do anything. You know, it's just, his eyes are fixated on this log splitter and we have the sound and just that as it gets closer and closer and Johnny's over there moving everything, you know, he's taking the log off, you know, and then he sets him up. And of course we don't go for the head just yet. We're going to put his hand there, you know, and this dude can't do anything about it. He's just going to watch. And, you know, it's awkwardly long. It takes forever to get to his hand. And I think for me, that's the beauty of it, because we're just waiting for, uh, you know, from the way that it's shot, you know, you don't have that kind of clear when it's going to be hitting. You just have to wait for the motion of the hand. And then as it hits and then the struggling of the machine. And then we just see I love the blood sleep uh, seeping out from underneath if you and it's just covering the floor and then johnny of course we have to have it retract back and then he has to go and set him onto the machine with his head there and the dude can't even watch he's just looking straight up at the ceiling so he knows that it's coming but has no idea when it's going to hit him and again awkwardly long as we wait for this just to hit his head and then the struggle of the machine of him just fucking chopping through that bone and then it just falls off <laughs> you know, for me, it's like it, it runs long. I think that's the beauty of it for me because it, it was a scene I wanted to tap out in. You know, um, it was like, OK, can we just get through this? Because I've had enough of seeing this guy go through what he's going through. So, you know, for me, absolutely such a well done scene. And from the sound design through the actual motion of watching his head be chopped off, it just absolutely works for me. So for me. Yes, the one thing that we're going to talk about is absolutely great. It's going to be something that everyone's going to talk about. It's going to pop up on, I think, best of the year in terms of kills. But for me, this scene takes the cake. And Evan, your your uh, your favorite kill besides the yoga kill? I was torn between two. 
Uh, and one of them was the one that Luke mentioned. So I'm going to pick the other one, but I do want to touch on that one for a second. Cause oh, yeah. That, that was definitely the kill that was like, that I was referencing when I was saying that we get that spectrum of like, there's the fun kills and then there's the darker kills. And this was one of those, really, it was the, it was the dark kill in the movie where it, it's less so like, oh, that's really cool. And you're just like, oh God, I really fucking want this to end. Like, it's so uncomfortable. It's so unsettling because this dude's spine has just been like dislodged and the way his eyes are like darting around the room, but that's the only motion you're seeing from him this entire time. Can't even control the muscles in his face. Like he's just looking around and it lasts so fucking long. <laughs> it goes on for so long. It's, it's, it's one shot too. You get one angle of this after he shows him the cutter, then you get this like just wide angle of the whole thing. I want to. I want to see how long that shot was. Like, I want to know the actual timestamp on it because it is uh, fucking long. I can say um, I think it's about eight minutes. That's what I, I thought. Right yeah, there. it had to be <laughs> yeah, like seven, I, eight minutes of just like I straight... had it timed at one point, but I never wrote it down because like I I was just kind of trying to sit through it and then I got distracted yeah. and forgot. But yeah, that that one definitely got under my skin quite a bit. Uh, I love how the machine kind of like struggles to get through his body, as Luke was saying. Like that that added a whole other layer to it. it. It's a really disturbing scene. I will say both times I've seen the movie, after a point, I was kind of like waiting for the scene to be over because it's like, all right, we've been sitting here for eight minutes now. <laughs> let's let's move on to the next thing. But that is part of the charm of the scene, and it's part of why it works is because you you have to fucking sit in it. Anyway, Luke already covered all this, and I talked about that way longer than I wanted to, because the kill that I'm going to actually pick um, is on the opposite side of the spectrum, and I have no idea what the guy's name is, but it's it's right at the end where the guy sneaks up behind Johnny. Oh, yeah. And then, like, is like, hey, you motherfucker, and Johnny turns around and just smashes him in the face. <laughs> and what really caught me was that that was... I just burst out laughing as soon as that <laughs> happened. That, like, the... The comedic timing of that was so perfect, and it was so fucking gory so quickly, which you're just not expecting. Like, you have probably, like, five straight minutes of near silence with, like, some people whispering, and then all of a sudden, it's just this explosion of gore in your face. And it's not so much the hacking away after, but it was just that initial swing against the tree where you get the effect of the dude's face, like, split in half, and you see that, yeah. like, shocked expression on his divided face was just such like such a it, it just caught me off guard and i i was just laughing hysterically uh i really appreciated that is it's the exact opposite of my other pick but i figured i would go with this because luke picked the, the other one. one yeah but uh, that, that one was fucking awesome <laughs> i i gotta say I, I enjoy everybody's picks um uh just briefly on each of them uh, for Jake, I, I love that he takes the body and he breaks into the ranger oh station. Oh my god! Bro, I completely forgot sequence. about that, dude. With the, that like adds... weird the Walkman that's like fucked up. Too. Yeah, Bro. yeah. That that adds another whole a whole other layer to it, man. I mean, he smashes through the door so with good. the head, and then he's like busting. Through, he's getting his costume with the body, dude. Like that. It, I don't know. The whole thing again, very long but very silly. Unlike the other yeah. scene we were just talking about. And uh, for Luke, this was one, it was a point of contention for us. I wasn't big on it the first time I saw the movie. I genuinely think I was uh, at the point where I was going to give it a strike for it because it just felt too long. But then Luke was sitting there and he was like, no, dude, like, that's what I love about it. And we talked about it for, what, maybe 15, 20 minutes. We yeah. talked about that kill. Uh, and I sat down on my second viewing and I, I warmed up a little bit more. And I can say each time I, I've sat there, I... I understand the the length still will get to me a little bit i think it's like right after he uh chops the arm off and then there's just waiting for him to get to the head portion uh it, it's just a little long in the tooth but i think that again very effective very well done i i enjoy that quite a bit um and then evan surprisingly that kill you picked i like that initial strike um and i think that in one conversation i had with luke prior to this i was a little harsh on that kill but that was just because of what transpires after. Yeah, uh, that's totally it, it, fair. It was kind of like, oh, wait, that's the one we end on. I was like, oh, no. But like, um, yeah. it's still it's, it's not still great a as a fun. final kill. It just it was it just hit me perfectly in the moment. Yeah. And and I will say, uh, I mean, 
let's talk about it. The yoga scene kill. This is the one that they're sending around all the influencers. Everybody yeah. has to react to. This is the one that is supposedly making people throw up in there. Luke said I don't there, buy it. He he said that uh, what was that? You said there was some uh, whisperings of like somebody was drunk or something. There was a um, in a <laughs> comment section of uh, someone said, uh, you know, who knows how truthful it is, but that someone had too many drinks prior to coming to the actual theater, and yeah. it, that's what caused him to throw up. Not it just so happened that it was that scene, so it wasn't necessarily. Yeah, I don't think it's vomit inducing. Yeah, but... yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. So. You know, but hey, take. I guess they're taking it, run with it. I don't know if that's going to shoot them. In the it worked for Terrifier. They're trying. Yeah, that. I. I was about to say, I after intimately scraping through uh, the bedroom scene on Terrifier two, and really dissecting that down piece by piece, I can say that like, that is a disgusting. I understand people throwing up kind of kill. This one is shocking by all means. It's shocking, but I think, and this is again. Maybe I'm clouded, maybe jaded, and I think maybe some of us are kind of feeling this way because we are. I'm not a general audience member. I watch horror movies all the time. Yeah. I love slasher movies. So seeing a kill like this, it's not like, oh, wow, that's disgusting. My stomach is turning. It's, holy fuck, this is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you're this. just yeah. excited. Yeah, like this is so cool. Like, I love it. And I got to say, the thing that blows my mind about it is just that I, I've watched it so many times now. And I'm telling you guys, I'm if there's any cgi like augmentation of any kind it's very very minimal and it's yeah. very well hidden because i'm pretty sure the way that they shoot this the way they cut it this is all practical effects and like it looks horrid and the last piece i'll say so i can let everybody else say their piece on it when the bone in the back of her neck protrudes and you get that bruise that yeah. instant bruising yeah, that yeah. is the part that like, oh, like, Bro. oh, my God, I feel it every time. <laughs> yeah. Jake, your thoughts on that kill, man? You know, I'm a big fan of movies that act like a stew where it's like you get a bunch of different flavors throughout the entire thing. Like, I think there are great movies that have a consistent feel the entire time. Don't get me wrong, but my favorites are the ones that can elicit so many different emotions with all their different scenes. This is a movie like that, in my opinion. And this is a this is a moment in the movie where it really won me over because I think everything that came before was good, was excellent, great stuff. I've seen it before in Slashers. Mm -hmm. I've never seen this fucking scene before in another movie. Like, this is like true originality and when you see something like this it just burns into your fucking brain like i will never be able to get that out of my head just like the bedroom scene from terrifier 2 just like the girl getting cut in half from vagina up i like it was awesome like i just i loved it to death it was it was visceral it was over the top it was so gory and it fits with this character who like we said in a scene prior was using somebody's head to break into a, a firehouse and get his mask and and acts and, and hooks that he runs around with this whole movie. I just, I, I loved it to death. It is so brutal. It's so gory. And I'm sorry, again, I'm going to sound like a goddamn broken record, but we skip the bullshit. We get the setup real fast, and then we get to that again. I will die on this hill. It's a fast-paced movie, and I don't care if we watch this I, guy walk around the whole time. I love it. <laughs> if you want to if you want to get into that, I also take your side on that. I think there are some slow moments that got to me, but... Uh, it, all subsequent rewatches of this have just flown by. It does it's fly. It's one of those things yeah. where it's like, oh, I'm already here. Like, when I get to the yoga scene each time, I'm like, damn, like, we're already at this point. I think, like, the first viewing, I could honestly get people saying, oh, it's a bit of a slow burn. But, like, at, the subsequent rewatches are just, like, they kind of, they, they, I think my brain is trained at that point to be like, okay, I, I don't need to pay attention so hard at these. But then when those scenes hit, you're like, oh, shit, like, yeah, it's time to go. Like, but even then, when you're watching the walking around and all that, sometimes they're setting shit up for later. Like at the very mm -hmm. beginning, you see the bear trap that comes back like five minutes later that the guy gets trapped in. It's like it's all important stuff. There's not a wasted. There's not too many wasted moments here. Either we're setting up the ambiance of the situation or setting up little Chekhov's gun moment for later. I I love it. I don't know. This this movie really did it for me. Oh, no, I'm, I'm all for it, Luke. Let's talk about that yoga scene. I know it's your second favorite kill. Uh, so, you know, you got to be a contrarian on here. But, uh, you know, let us know. What did you think? It. I mean, that's the that's the party scene. That's the fun. Let's get it done scene. Yeah. You know, and when um, I think there were, was it the poster, or I maybe just a few images could come out. And it was Johnny. It was the images. Um, you know, Sundance. With, with the weapon. And, you know, that was something we kind of focused on. That was a focal point of, you know, I wonder what this, you know, I hope this is a weapon of choice and not just, you know, for the scene. And it was, 
interesting to see how he was going to, you know, use this thing. So, you know, looking at it, um, just the uniqueness of this kill is just, you know, how do you come up with, hey, we're going to put a hook in a head and then rip it through a torso. And, <laughs> you know, you know, visually, it's fantastic. It, it's it, gore filled. It's it, jarring to watch. But, you know, watching it a few times, you know, you really focus in on the audio of it just with like as Johnny's like having that struggle of being having I guess it's tough to rip a, a head through a torso <laughs> who knew but um you know having to tighten that chain and you know it's not just like this one and done motion it's like he's struggling to rip the the head through the torso and you know we get those close-up shots of the tightening of how tight there's no slack in that chain and him just trying to the bones breaking you know flies around I think you know absolutely gore filled visually it's it's fantastic but you know I think it, more and more I watch it, I really zero in on the audio of it just because it is so well done. And it's just, you know, when you're looking at a kill, sometimes I think the the focal point is that visual and, you know, the, the sound design falls by the wayside. But this one, you know, they took advantage of the sound design throughout the entire film. And of course, how many, we talked about how beautiful the film is. It's, hey, we just got through this gory scene and then her body falls down just that shot of her body falling down that slope and it's just so beautiful we have the lake you have the background it's like man Hello i wide. just saw i just saw something terrible but god damn is this beautiful you know so it's like you have these moments in here where it's just visually beautiful and i think that's such a, a great um a great scene to point to of you know you have this horrific kill but then it's followed up by just something so beautiful so um you know it's such a jarring scene it's something that like i said is going to end up certainly on all of our best kills of the year um easily top five but you know it's something that's probably going to be talked about for years to come so um they really i'm curious to see how this this idea started of who 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 thought of it and was like hey it'd just be cool to rip a head from a <laughs> hook through a torso that's like, why not absolutely and evan your thoughts on that infamous kill i mean you you know how there are so many like cut kills from Friday the 13th and all we have is like old bullshit grainy footage of it that is not satisfying and would never be able to put into a cut of the movie because it would be the most jarring thing you'd ever see. This felt like getting one of those like fabled kills that you hear about in like early versions of uncut Friday the 13th movies. Uh, this is a perfect slasher kill. There, There is absolutely nothing that could make this better and it's not just the kill itself but i also think it's the placement in the movie because well i think we're all in agreement that none of us find this movie like boring or slow or anything like that there's gonna be a lot of people who will mm -hmm. uh, and putting this bang on halfway through the movie is the perfect place to put it because by that point, you're going to have people like us who are still fucking locked in, but you're going to have a lot of the audience who's like kind of dozing away a little bit. And then halfway through the movie, you go fucking pay attention. And it was such a smart way to position the scene. Everything about this was so crazy. Because like at first, the first thing that happens is that he punches through her back and out her stomach. And you're like, wow, that's a fucking crazy kill. That's wild. And then he, like, stabs her in the head with the hook. You're like, Jesus, she's really dead. That sucks. And then it just keeps fucking going. Where every time you think, like, all right, she's dead. There's the kill. Something new happens. And then there's, there's like, a 20-second period where every shot you're going, oh, 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 fuck, oh, my God. Like, every new shot is introducing some new element of this kill that elevates it beyond where you already thought it was going. And it was such a brilliantly executed moment where Dylan, you were talking about like the bruising appearing on the back of the neck. You're already like, ah, oh, shit. And then like the next shot, which to me was the money shot of them, like pulling her whole top half of her body down. That, that was the shot where I like was fully blown away by what I was looking at. Um, that looks very much like a classic Jason kill, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we have him pulling her head through a hole in her own stomach. And like Luke was saying, the sound design is so important. Which is something with this whole movie, because we don't even have score in this movie. There's no music. right? And there's something very visceral about watching a scene like this play out with no music 
at all. Um, and then I, I also, I really love that wide shot that they did because you are kind of like taking in the serene image of, of this beautiful hillside, but then you're also watching like a mangled body roll down the side. You're like, I'm willing to live with that. The rest of this is very nice. Um, this is easily, easily the best slasher kill I've seen since the bedroom scene in Terrifier 2. There's, there's, there's nothing I can think of that's come even close to this. This is an all-timer, rivals some of the best of what has been in Friday the 13th. I don't know if that's going to be a hot take. I don't I... imagine it will be because this, like, I don't know how you can argue that. This is so fucking crazy. Um, so creative. I want to talk to the guy who came up with this <laughs> and, like, yeah, just I... roundtable discussion. <laughs> I can say, like, without a doubt, like, one of the, the key points that I need to commend uh, IFC and Shudder for doing is putting this out in theaters unrated. Uh, you know, yeah, it's like, this would, yeah, you have to. Yeah, like, th there's a reason, and it's this scene, and it's the scene that Luke uh, was talking about with the woodcutter. Uh, I mean, like, I think it's those two scenes are the ones that would have really tripped up the MPAA. I mean, like, the scene where uh, the guy gets his head chopped off and then it's used to, you know, break into the place. Yeah, that's, that that's gory, it. but it's I think it's quick enough because like one of the things that's it's almost like a trauma response. I feel like from my brain, the first time Luke and I talked about this, I was talking about how quick the kill is. But then he had to remind me, he's like, no, like he, she's the tensions there. He's yanking it. Yeah. Through. So it's like your brain on like, you know, replay, you're just like. Yeah, it's just really fast. And then, obviously, in comparison to the woodcutter scene, it is really fast, but yeah. it still takes its time. And, yeah, I, I really think that this is going to be the money shot. This is going to be the one everybody talks about. It's it's already the one everybody talks about. But when a general audience sees this, uh, I, I'm going to be very curious to see this upcoming weekend what people That's why I want to see it in the theater, are, yeah. are going to say. I want to like, hear I, this. I know. I want to find the, the most packed screening I can and just, like, <laughs> pop in there. And, and see look it. for them. It's, it's, I usually try to find the least crowded showtime, but this one I'm I'm like bang on going like seven o'clock Friday night. I'm like, let me get the most people in here. Absolutely. I really hope people see this one, man. You know, I yeah. remember yeah. I'm sure you guys saw Terrifier 2 when it first released, right? It was it didn't release in theaters near me. No I couldn't. way. Um so I Dude. actually had to wait until it was on Screenbox. I did catch the re-release. Thank God. Okay, good. And I good. really hope that three has a wider theatrical release. And if it doesn't, I'm fucking traveling. Like, well, <laughs> come to Ohio. <laughs> like, I legit will. C come see it with us, man. But to make a point real quick, you know, I remember going to the theater to see Terrifier 2. And of course, you know, there's fans of the first one who are there, like that are already hanging out. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Round two. And then it's even better, you know. But for this one, I'm worried that people won't show up to the theater. Now, of course, we are record recording this a week before it goes out. So, who knows? But I really hope people show up to this one. Like, I'm as impressed with this movie as I was with Terrifier 2. Like, I I don't know. Maybe that's a hot take. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I really hope people go out and check it out. And if you're seeing this Sunday after it releases, go see it. Go see it in theaters. Support theaters, mm -hmm. people. Come on now. Okay, Dylan, go ahead. Sorry. No, I had to get my rants I, out of the way. I, I agree. I think this is a good segue to get into this. And then we'll talk about uh, the, the sequence that I think we we all will kind of have our own little piece on and then we'll kind of give final thoughts. But yeah, I think that like, this is one I really do want people to go support just because it is unique, but I, I gotta be honest and I have to be real that uh, there's a lot of general audience members who are going to be expecting something different. And this is that, going to get flamed by a lot of people. Yes, because, and I, I, I love you shutter. I love you IFC, but I think that going through and saying, oh, this is going to make you throw up. This is going to be the most intense. Go it's like, yeah, it's crazy, but I think that's a bad call. I think you are setting expectations too high because, yes, at the end of the day, this is, I would put this in the realm of elevated horror because it, it, it's got a lot of experimental stuff in it. I mean, we're seeing a film from a killer's perspective with no score. It's all ambience. It's all just, you know, him going through and to slasher fans like us all of us this works this is great because we've never seen it before it's exciting we love this stuff and it's cool but yeah i'm i'm concerned that general moviegoers are going to go expecting a harder edged friday the 13th movie and they're going to get something that's trying to uh be a bit more than that be a bit more impressive like it definitely gets there but i think that yeah it's 
it's setting itself up in a a raw spot and i'm worried for it you know there's a lot of slashers out there that critics just hate there's outliers of course don't get me wrong but i don't expect this to have a 100 on rotten tomatoes or something like that i will i will say that like i think slash like yeah slasher fans are gonna love it is the general audience going to i don't know i mean dude there's movies i can i consider you know modern horror classics that have like a 46 percent on rotten tomatoes and people are like eh about them and i don't like i don't get that like the strangers we were talking about the other day like the original one dude like that's one of my all-time favorites well received critically no not at all yeah. and it, it blows my mind i'm like that's the most scared i've ever been watching a slasher like to this day i i do this for a living i, wa I watch so many fucking slasher movies and that is easily the scariest one in my opinion and people are like yeah it's whatever it's a home invasion movie and i'm like i don't i don't get that it's crazy so wh whatever does come from this i hope that people do check it out in the theaters and if you're a fan of slashers i think you'll dig it i hope you do at the very least and luke how are you feeling about uh what do you think audiences are going to do when this thing finally releases you know, I, I think this is going to be a divisive film. Um, I think a lot of uh, certainly general audience um, is going to want to go in and kind of just want your typical slasher that they're used to. You know, this releasing Thanksgiving being such a big win in the slasher genre. And then um, people like, oh, that was a lot of fun. And then kind of coming into in a violent nature and hearing that, you know, uh, it's going to make you throw up and you're, they're going to be expecting that kind of I think that tongue-in-cheek kind of slasher that we did get kind of with thanksgiving that's what they're used to and i think one of the big problems is here you know as i take notes and i'm watching this i we have a kill but it's off screen at the closer toward the beginning you know they kind of cut away to it um we don't get the other kill with um aaron and his head gets cut off um until a little bit later i timed it it's about 28 minutes in so you know when you're going in for a slasher and you're marketing this will these kills will make you throw up i can see some audiences tuning out and i know uh you guys had said you, you found it fast paced and you know going into it um i think my hesitation was how is this going to work is this going to be so slow paced because we're going to be walking with our killer and i think that can kind of trick your brain because it does move at a faster pace than i was expecting but i think you know in general we're paying attention to a lot we're paying attention to birds chirping the uh, the sound of the the woods as he's walking through it i think you know general audience are they going to have a love for that type of thing are they are they going to be paying attention to things they they should be paying attention to or are they just going to be waiting to get to that next scene i think maybe that's going to be um a point of contention for a lot of people so i could easily see this one being split i think people um who enjoy it are really loving and i think people who are going to not really like it are probably really going to hate it so i think this is going to be a divisive film because it's so experimental and you know again on paper uh, maybe this I, this concept doesn't work it works for us but i can see this not working for uh, a general audience going in just to kind of have fun and not really have to take in you know m not make your brain do a bunch of work in terms of taking in scenery and listening to the audio uh so i could see this one being very divisive but you know i think at least opening weekend i think a lot of people will show up for it just because it's going to be hey we're, we're getting a slasher this is kind of a pseudo jason Voorhees, so let's go check it out and i could but i could just see you know some general audience being disappointed in what they do get i think one of the the things that i love about johnny and, and it's i think it's part of it's built into what the script is and what the film is itself is he sort of has these contemplation moments where um you don't necessarily i mean you kind of get to see it with like Michael Myers and that, you know, the moment when he does the, the whole head tilt after, after kill or something like that. But there was never any time where we wanted to directly copy any of those things from any uh, specific character or anything. There's just kind of little nods and homages to things. But what I, I love about Johnny, which it feels like a singular thing with him is that he, he does have these moments where it's just him um, after a kill scene or leading up to a kill scene. But one, one moment particularly stands out and this is what i'm kind of talking about is after the the yoga uh scene on the on the hilltop on the cliffside he just kind of is standing there and there's a, there's they just they held a shot and i don't know if it was like uh, just a specific edit they used after a moment or if they just used this or if, if it was on purpose i like i can't remember exactly but there's just a moment where johnny's just standing there and he's just it feels like he's just kind of contemplating he just takes a bit of a step and it's like he's looking out over the the uh cliff and it just feels like he's taking mm -hmm. pride in this this serene moment that he <laughs> is is taking in after he just did this horrible thing. And to me, that makes Johnny a little more creepy that he just has these 
these motivations and and this he's this he's this moving wild animal monster machine of a of a creature and just kind of uh you get to see all of that with him you get to see what's behind and and you still don't really understand him you still don't know too much mm -hmm. about him but but uh you get to be with him and uh see how that works and evan how are you feeling yeah, this, this is going to be pretty... I don't know if it's going to be split down the middle, but it's definitely going to be a, a very divisive one. I do think a lot of that is going to come from the marketing. Um, I, I don't think... I don't think they should be marketing this as like, this is the movie that's going to make you throw up and, you know, pushing the clips of people reacting to the yoga kill scene as, as part of the, the marketing, which I get it, like... Obviously, it's tempting to do, especially when you have people talking about your movie in that way, and you see the success of something like Terrifier, where those early reports of people like passing out and throwing up in the theater at Terrifier 2 was definitely a part of the thing that drew people uh, to seeing it. This movie is structured in such a way that there are going to be some people who will absolutely love it, which I think we're, we're all in that boat where we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Um, but there's going to be a lot of people who are going to find this a boring and empty movie, um, which is not how I feel, but I know that that's going to happen because a lot of it is walking through the woods. There's, there's, there's going to be an audience who just will not respond to that. Who's going to say, I want, uh, maybe they want to be spending time with the characters. I don't know. I feel the same way Jake does where it's like, we're trimming out the bullshit and that makes me happy. But maybe maybe that bullshit is something that a lot of slasher fans enjoy. I don't know. Um, it, it's I'm I'm really curious to see it because I made a video about the trailer, uh, and even that has been like there's been a lot of contention in the comments about is this some like new unique take on the slasher genre or is this just a trite boring nothing slasher like before people are even seeing it i'm having the exact i'm seeing the exact same conversations that i'm expecting to see when the movie comes out um and I, i'm interested i i no matter what i just hope that people support it i want right. people to go out to the theater and show this movie love because this is only a good thing for horror and for indie filmmaking in general. If people go out and support this, whether or not you think it's going to be something that you'll enjoy, I think you're going to, every horror fan is going to have fun with something in this movie because it does cover such a broad spectrum of, of tone and atmosphere and uh, fun factor and disturbing elements. There, there's something there that you're going to enjoy, and I think it's worth going out and supporting that, even though I do think it's going to be very divisive yeah i mean it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens um i hope that we're kind of wrong i hope that at least people will go out and say hey you know it wasn't for me but i had enjoyed it and it will encourage people i do think that like what luke was saying there there's a tongue-in-cheek nature to like a uh a, a trick-or-treat or sorry not trick or treat, thanksgiving um and then there's also uh you know terrifier too for it being this underground kind of, you know, gore fest, uh, there's still, again, tongue in cheek nature and really solid characters. I mean, if we're comparing these three films on a spectrum here, uh, that movie has the best characters uh, and they're really well rounded. And it's, it's like, you know, Thanksgiving, all right, characters, pretty standard slasher stuff. And this one, like no characters other than Johnny and he doesn't talk. So it's like, it, it is one of those things where I think it is going to kind of, drive people a little bit up a wall now the thing that i think is really gonna damn this movie is that final scene the last yes. 10 minutes of this movie <laughs> we we see and i get it and i i feel like i have to say this every fucking time i bring this up i get it i know what they're going for the messaging was super clear the first time i saw it he's an animal he, he's just doing it because it's he's not an hard to piece it's together not, it's, yeah yeah why are yeah. you sitting there and explaining it to me like I'm five? Like, why are you telling me this whole story about your brother getting attacked by a bear? Which I assume there's a, I, after my second viewing, I'm like, okay, is that supposed to be Johnny? Is that what they're saying? But like, okay, maybe it is just a bear. Cause it's like, you know, it's just a wild animal, uh, you know, the hen house disease or syndrome and everything. It's, I just don't know why that's what you chose to end on. It's I cool that it. they had the one from Friday the 13th Part 2 playing her. That was cool. Mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's all fine and dandy, but I am just still just like, I don't know why we, we decided that was the final blow. That was the final punch. Cause it's, and I get it. We've been trained to expect the one final scare. It's the whole, they make fun of it and scream and they've done it uh, forever. But it's like, I, I just would have really liked it in that moment. If it's like, you've done so many things that are different. You've literally made a movie that is so unique and different. This is the one time you can do something where it's like, they pull over. I really got to dress that leg. And then it's like, she gets it. She's like, all right, cool. We're good. Sits up. Johnny hits her with an ax and then is about to hit the other girl or with the hook or something. And you freeze frame and it's just in a violent nature. I just knocked over and I forgot to. But uh, yeah, it's it's like, uh, it, that would have been great. That would have been awesome. Music would have been cool and everything. But to just have an end on such a whimper, I just, I had to knock it down a point. I've seen it again multiple times. Still has never sat well with me. Yeah, it's, I don't want to go so far as to say it's pretentious, but it just doesn't, I, I don't, like, it's just feels like the, you know, Chris Nash, I believe, wrote wrote and directed this movie, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think he's really obsessed with the character that he created here, and that's cool. He's like, Johnny's an awesome killer, but it, it, it takes a step too far. We get it. You know, at this point in the movie, I just want one last fun scare, like you said, Dylan, and just have this thing be over. I think my biggest problem with it is just that. I don't even care that we hit on the themes, like, reinforce them again with this odd little story, soliloquy, whatever. I just think my, my biggest issue with it is that it just kind of ends with that shot of the locket like yeah we know like we know that's all he wanted and we know exactly where exactly that was that was coming from it was almost a little predictable too that it was like yeah he was just gonna take that and go back to his his uh his hole in the ground and just piece the fuck out i i kind of wish we had gotten one more scare or something or maybe she had taken the locket with her or something or something along those lines got one more kill he gets the locket she drives off bam that's the end of the movie cool like it could it could have been done in a more exciting manner i think my my thing about it is because it's at least purposeful we're not watching something that has literally no point to it that's why i'm like i'm not bothered by it that much i just wish we we had a little more of a bang here at the end one last like uh one last friday the 13th remake jump scare where jason comes out of the pond and rips every everybody down you know like that's such a standout moment in that flick sure it's a stinger scare and sure you've seen that a million times in well that franchise alone but a bunch of other horror flicks too but there's a reason that they all do it you know there's there's a reason that some tropes are tropes i guess no i agree and i will say the, the one piece i do gotta say is uh the locket thing that that shot i like that shot i think that's a great shot that would have been enough for me but like to have the, the just the whole 10 minutes of them explaining it, it's just, I'm not for it. Luke, your thoughts there, sir? You know, and looking at films, I enjoy, like, long, drawn-out dialogue if, it, if it's done correctly and if it's placed in the right spot. I don't think, like, you know, I think this, there could have been a place for this scene somewhere in this film, but it certainly wasn't at the end. And, you know, uh, my fear is when you look at uh, a film, it, overall grading, like, in a weighted grade, the ending is is just so heavy for people where that's the last thing you're seeing. That's what you're walking out of theater. That's what is going to leave you before you reflect on the rest of the things that you've seen. But I think a lot of people are going to see that 10 minute exposition and say, OK, I've just watched him. So certainly General Adonis, I just walked watched him walk through the woods. And then, yes, we did have some kills. And then we ended with a giant exposition of uh, two women in a car and you know you're expecting that last one final scare because that's the formula of, of whether you like it or not that's the formula you know so um it's a very specific formula as randy would say but um <laughs> you know it's uh <laughs> you know and i think that's gonna kill it for a lot of people because you know yes we're applying it to a personal um a personal um issue so something they live through and i like that idea but by the end of it, you know, and they did play it in the trailer where, you know, that one fine, the point that they're trying to make, it, you just said one line. It could have just been that line and that could have just been it because it's in a violent nature. We understand. We get it. But, you know, I think as we're wanting something more and then we don't get it, there's no real payoff in terms of well, that final scare, the final kill, anything like that. I think it's going to leave audiences a little under, underwhelmed. It certainly left me underwhelmed from the trajectory that we were on. I was expecting something, some finality to it. Um, I understand what they're going for, but I don't necessarily necessarily think it works at the very end of this film. Because, yes, we, uh, especially the kill that we had just gotten prior to that, where it is just 
vicious. It's mayhem. You know, we're kind of pumping up the audience of uh, was Chris running through the woods and we're expecting something. But then, you know, she gets in the car and all is fine. And we just end with a, you know, we're looking out into the woods and then we, you know, we have the gas can with the locket or no locket. So, um, you know, I, I think general audiences, I think, are certainly going to dislike it. I think, you know, the horror community is going to be probably pretty split on that whether they they think it works or doesn't i just don't think that was the right placement for this evan your thoughts on the final scene so i i want to uh make it very clear that i love me a good long monologue uh i've said it a number of times robert eggers and mike flanagan are my two favorite people working in horror right now i love this shit my favorite scene in the lighthouse is the fucking monologue okay this, the thing is, like, a monologue should be revealing of characters and themes, but you can't really be re revealing of something if the entirety of your monologue is just repeating shit that we kind of already picked up on watching the movie. Um, I, I feel like I'm actually, I kind of differ a little bit from you guys because I did not want one final scare. Um, I loved just driving away and seeing that empty dirt road and seeing her looking out into the woods and waiting for something and then not having something come. I thought that was super fucking eerie. And and that really worked for me. That resonated with me a lot. And I love the shot of the gas can and the pendants just gone and then the movie ends. Again, that was that felt eerie. That felt kind of creepy to me. And I, I love that like kind of understated finality to it because so much of this movie is this like quiet meticulous uh almost metronomic experience so I, I like that it just stops my issue isn't that my issue is that it fucking drags the last 10 minutes of this movie is a wholly unrelated anecdote that is just iterating on the senselessness of the violence, which is something that the movie already made clear with its presentation. It wasn't something that we needed any exposition on. I don't mind a little exposition at the end if you want to have this, this conversation between these two characters, but to have it drag on for so long and not change anything about the experience of the movie, it doesn't add anything for me. Um, it just kind of makes the final act of the movie kind of fizzle away in an unsatisfying way um i wasn't a big fan of it but it, it's not something that like killed it for me like i still watched it twice and i'm still gonna go see it again and i'm gonna pick up the blu-ray and this is gonna be one that i will absolutely watch every summer i would imagine this is gonna be mm. one of those ones where like i'm always gonna be in the mood to watch it but that's gonna be in spite of the ending it's not gonna be because anything that the ending does elevates this it's just something where like you you have everything that the movie is going to do an hour and 20 minutes in. I don't know. Is is it a 90 minute movie? Is it an hour and a half? Uh yeah, it's like about an hour and a half, I think. Okay. It's, so it's you have hour 33. Everything that the movie's going to do, it does in the first hour and 20 minutes. And then you just have these last 10 that don't do much of anything, but you just you'll watch them because it's the end of the movie. If there's 10 minutes left, whatever. That's where I stand on it. And I think that's all all fair, all good takes. Uh, I will say I'm going to spoil one line from a movie that we just watched, Luke and I, called Deer Camp 86. Uh, and the it's it's I just made this connection as you guys were talking about it, so it's kind of funny. In that movie, it is, again, a slasher. Uh, they're doing something a little different in there. But uh, it's slasher comedy. There are characters that get picked up by another character and one character that picks them up. Uh, they're like, what happened out there, man? And uh, I just thought it was super funny. And I just connected this where he's just like, oh, the sheriff or sorry, the sheriff cuts in. And he's just like, it was a bear. It's always a bear. And I'm just like, God damn, that's literally what they did in this movie, too, isn't it? They were just like, yeah, it was a bear, wasn't it? It was some kind of animal. Yeah, it was an animal. It was just it was horrible. It was some kind of animal. But they just do it for Fuck. so much longer. Yeah, it's like, but that was one line, and then they drive off, and that's the end of that fucking movie. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool, great. But, yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's just all about presentation. It's all about where you place your scenes. And, and I, I, I agree with everything everybody said, but for me, it's just something that I haven't been able to kind of get over. So 
that's why I dropped it down from a, a must see to a recommend on our grading scale, uh, which is still a very high scale. It's still it's or a very high grade. Uh, it's still one that I like Evan said, I'll pick up on Blu-ray. I'll watch it. It's it's a very great addition to my summer slasher catalog. But like it, it is something where it's just like, yeah, I I just wish that there was a little something more and it wasn't just trying to explain things that I already knew that I got. It's like, I'm not stupid. I get them. I get it. You don't have to hold my hand this hard, you know, but uh, yeah. All right. Final brief, final thoughts, wrap up, tell the audience if you've seen the, if you've watched this whole thing and you haven't seen the movie, uh, you've done yourself a disservice, but go support it. Jake, final thoughts. You know, warts and all, I love this film to death. Evan brought up earlier how the Friday the 13th franchise, you know, uh, constantly got cut down by the MPAA. And it, like you go back and watch some of those movies now, you know, especially after seeing some modern slashers that have like this intense gore and super like intricate part killers. Seven. Part seven, dude, every Bro. kill is nothing, man. And it's and that's a great movie, in my opinion. If yeah, that had some too. gory I kills, I'd part seven might be my my favorite of the whole bunch. But the, I think the thing that this movie does for me that none of the Friday films do is that it's so brutal, it's so gory, it's so intricate with its its main character, really, more than anything else. It does something that I've just always wanted to see this franchise, th that franchise do in kind of its own little standalone thing. So as a big Friday fan, this movie means the world to me in, in a weird sort of way. And I think other Friday fans who feel the same way can get that, can get something out of this that they've always wanted to see in that, in that franchise. So for me, it's like movie of the year. I love this. It's such a big standout. There are other gory slashers, sure, but there's not too many like Friday the 13th feeling over the top gory slashers like this. You know what I mean? I just, oh, this film did it for me in, in every sense of the word. I've seen copycats of, of other, you know, like Hatchet and all that. And th those are fun. You know, they're cool. But th I don't know. This is like super special in my opinion. If you're a fan of the, that franchise, go see this. You You probably will like it. I hope at least. I, I've seen some takes on this movie too that I want to just hit like real quick and I swear to God I'll shut up because I know we're going a little long. You're fine. You're um, good, I've heard, you know, I've heard some people say it's like playing the Friday the 13th video game but you pass the controller to your little brother and I'm like, that's so unfair in my opinion. Like, I don't know. I was going into this because I, I had asked you, Dylan, I was like, can you give me a uh, a non-spoiler review like what what your thoughts are of this and you're like dude it's awesome until the ending like even the ending was kind of like the ending's kind of weird and i won't say why you know so i'm kind of kind of expecting this one not to end so well and even then i'm still like i'm not even bugged that much by that personally like i really enjoyed this movie to death the positive positives outweigh the cons for me at least with this one and even though that ending is like we said kind of pointless kind of just redundant i think redundant is the best word it's just it's it's it works for what this film's trying to say but it doesn't need to be there i still enjoyed everything about this flick i'm i'm a big fan i hope this becomes a franchise even though i don't think it will because like you guys said gonna have a divisive reaction but isn't that the best films overall aren't we all kind of a little excited for francis ford coppola's absolute disaster <laughs> of a new movie that's gonna come out like i'm so excited to see that maybe piece of shit but Point being, check this one out because because it's going to be so divisive, you're going to have people that absolutely fucking love it and people who absolutely hate it. And those are the most interesting movies, in my opinion, opposed to something like uh, The Strangers Chapter One that is just bland, gray, pretty patty garbage. I've had some people <laughs> defending it in the comments. I love that movie. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, Luke, your final <laughs> thoughts? You know, uh, this one uh, is something that's, I wasn't sure. I was intrigued by this one. Didn't know how it was going to turn out. And I got to say, I I watched this one <laughs> three times and I'm going to watch it a fourth. Uh, certainly, you know, this is something I'm going to uh, pick up on Blu-ray. It will be something that I, I do watch at least annually, if not um, a couple times a year. Uh, but, you know, this one, they venture down an experimental road, but they stay true to those uh, traditional uh, slasher roots. And I got to say, you know, to, to balance that, that method i think was the true art to it and also brings something different where you know in 2024 it, the idea of the narrative is that everything's been done there's not much to do in the slasher franchise but you know we had everything we've talked about here terrifier 2 brought something interesting to the table thanksgiving brought that reminiscence of the 80s and also did a lot of fun things whereas in a violent nature ventured down that experimental road and 
in my in my opinion, they knocked it out of the park because there's a lot to take away from this film. Um, you know, they really added, I think, gravitas to uh, the slasher genre with this one because you can see how beautiful a slasher film can be when it's shot correctly, when uh, they take interest in the sound design and really add those interesting kills and also that connective tissue and the lore to your slasher. So, you know, I think this one does fire on all cylinders. I think, you know, is it going to be divisive? Certainly, you know, uh, this is an experimental film. Do I think, you know, other slashers should take note and, you know, use this kind of gimmick? No, I think, you know, In a Violent Nature has has done it right. This is probably the jaws of experimental horror <laughs> slasher films, I guess. You know, they, they got it right, so probably nothing else will live up to this one because it is so well done. Uh, yeah, the last 10 minutes do drag, but it doesn't kill the film. You know, it's just something you... You take the good with the bad, and like Jake said, there are way more positives in this film than negatives. So, you know, um, hopefully, you know, if you're listening to me speak about this now, you've seen the film, um, being because you know <laughs> we spoiled everything. But you know, uh, this is something I hope people um, walk away with a positive experience and certainly pick up on Blu-ray. So more films, not necessarily like this, but you know, in that same vein, can be made. I like it. I like it. Evan, final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I fucking love this movie. This was great. Like, even even with my criticisms of it, as I was saying, like, I loved this movie in spite of things like the ending where it just kind of dragged out a little bit for me. Because really, aside from those last 10 minutes, I don't really have any issues with this movie. Like, it was just a damn good slasher movie. It's easily one of the best slasher movies I've seen in years. It, it ticks so many boxes that you're looking for, especially if you're a Friday the 13th fan, because as Jake was saying, that you know, we have things like Hatchet, but those don't quite scratch the same itch. There, There is something with this movie specifically that, that hits notes that I haven't felt from a slasher movie in a really, really long time. And it was it was very fun to, to have that feeling again. Um, I, I, I don't like it as much as I liked like Terrifier 2. I, that, to me, is, is more compelling. There was more going on there. That movie ended and I felt like I had just like witnessed history. <laughs> this ended and I was just like that was fucking dope despite the last 10 minutes um, I thoroughly enjoyed it I will be picking it up on Blu-ray uh, I, I have no idea what sort of franchise potential this has I I haven't weighed in on that really because I just don't know where I stand on this I think it could go either way I don't know how much more gas in the tank there is for the gimmick of this movie specifically I think if they do continue it then they have they may have to try to approach it through a different lens which I would be all in on or if Chris Nash wants Chris Nash wants to do something completely different, I'm also in on this on that because he totally proved himself here. This was fucking great. It's got a great killer. It cuts away all the bullshit that you have to deal with watching Friday the Thirteenth movies. Uh, not that I don't like them, I fucking love Friday the Thirteenth. Don't get me wrong here. Uh, it is unrated, so you don't have to deal with like butchered kills that kind of feel like I'm watching a slasher movie. What the fuck are we doing here? Um, it's the practical it's basically all practical i didn't see any cg here and it all looked fucking fantastic um the it, it's such a unique approach the ambient atmospheric focus is something that i was i was super in on uh, it is i think they described it recently as the most soothing slasher movie you'll ever see and i don't disagree with that because <laughs> like you do kind of just get sucked into the soundscape of it and and walking through the forest and this lush green uh you know forestry that's around it just it really works this movie's fucking awesome uh it's not perfect but any slasher fan should make this a priority to go out and see it and buy it on blu-ray support the fuck out of this because we need more shit like this this is awesome at least the encouragement of more experimental slashers yes. and uh just slasher films in general uh we showed we want up to for... encourage experimentation Yep, we showed up for Thanksgiving. Uh, we've shown up for Terrifier too. I think like this is another quality one that again will be divisive, maybe a little bit more on the art house side. But I think that uh, we're certainly its audience, and I think that there will be more out there. And I hope that you guys go see it multiple times, or at minimum see it in theaters, watch it on Shutter, support it. Uh, but yeah, that is going to conclude our uh, spoiler review for 
in a violent nature. We hope that you guys have enjoyed sitting down with us. Uh, let us know down below. Answer some of those questions that I posed. Uh, let us know if there's anything that we missed that you'd like to expand upon. We'll talk about it in the comments with you guys. And yeah, I mean, this is just one for uh, one for the books, in my opinion. I'm really happy with what uh, IFC and Shutter have been putting out this year. Between this and Late Night with the Devil and a few others, they've really been strutting their stuff. So I'm excited to see what it, more yeah. comes. And uh, yeah, I, I do got to say, Damien's got his work cut out for him. So uh, as far yep. as kill of the year goes, but uh, I think that uh, you know we'll just uh, have to see if he can live up to those promises. It's no longer an easy kill. win. No, <laughs> yeah. no, it's no. It was before. It's not victory. anymore. Got some competition here. Yeah, and hey, that's always good. I as a horror Fuck fan, yeah. that, that's that's always that's always positive. Uh, and uh, oh, one thing I did forget to mention: uh, I really loved the the credit music. The Black Fly yes. song. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. That was so cute. Down I love that. I, yes. Like, I, I'm always for an upbeat kind of song. Uh, yeah. I know they use it in X, but I have always thought that that song, uh, In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry, would mm, be yeah. like the perfect trailer song for a reboot of Friday the 13th. Like, just see everybody getting uh, doing stuff, setting up, and then Jason just comes in and starts whacking people. Would love it. But <laughs> this same energy same thing loved it but alrighty, guys that's gonna wrap us up here so i will uh go around the table of course uh i am dylan and uh thank you for stopping by sir you below me i am killjoy jake luke oh yeah oh. me or who, which one you luke, luke. I, I said i was going around i'm luke janesco there you go and i'm evan from rockland graves and remember folks Stay scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep that in. Do the horse shit, gonna do it live. Put splatter cast ticket every day they lie. Splatter cast, gonna smash your ass.